welcome to this week's video in the garden where as you can tell it's been raided it's been raining a lot however i was away this week if you saw thursday's video i went off to the sun so i cannot complain about this weather because i did get a break from it but when i came back from my holidays there was it was wednesday there was a tiny bit of sunshine so much has come into bloom in a week like i was i left my garden for a whole week almost six seven six days and when i came back magnolia has opened loads more tulips have opened now today it is raining so some of the stuff has got a bit flat but i'm still going to show you because maybe next week's video there might be a bit of sunshine although i checked the weather app and they ain't looking too fresh. But here's my thinking. I've mulched the borders. The soil is gonna get lots of moisture. So if it is gonna be maybe drier in like June or July, hopefully I'll retain some of the moisture. Cause I think I was saying, <coughs> sorry, I have a bit of a tickle in my throat. I think I was saying in um, a previous video that February was quite dry. I did actually have to water some plants in February. So I'm not gonna complain when there's a bit of rain cause I know they need it. Let me show you what's grown and then I wanna do something with the sweet peas that I saw on Instagram, um, where they pinched them off and put them in water and then got more plants. Um, I'll give you a seedling update, we'll have a walk around. Don't know if I'll get to do much. Um, in this week's video, I really wanted to cut the grass, but it's literally squelch. But anyway, let me show you around. So I am looking a little bit messy around here, definitely need to clean up, but magnolia has opened and there is lots of new growth down here so i didn't put anything new in here bar one delphinium i think over there um but magnolia from last year that was planted has started to open and this literally just opened in a matter of days I've noticed down here, this is a self-seeded, um, what's the word? You are edible, my nephew loves you, you taste seedy, fennel, fennel. This is self-seeded from, there is some fennel over there in a pot and it is just free plant, woohoo. Um, I think these are alceas around here. This is verbena, bit of rogue mint is after sneaking in. Um, not much happening with the rambling rose in the back, but there is new growth on it. And then pear daffodils looked amazing the other day when there was some sunshine, but they have just flumped over a little bit with the rain. It has been nonstop rain for about, I don't know, a good 12 hours. <laughs> so they've taken a bashing. But when the sun comes out and they dry off, they will be back up loud and proud. Uh, Delphinium, this is, I think this is the one I may have planted in or was the one over there that I put in there's another one here as well no these are the ones that were already here and I think that's the new one I put in over there so they flower I think the end of May and again they just shoot up and I think these are blue that I have and then I think I planted wasn't it like a purple white one over there I do not know what this is <laughs> I think it might be some kind of bulb I do not know what it is anyone can let me know in the comments i think it might be a bulb that i put down in autumn and i forgot about story of my life you see the grass is really squelchy that pear crocuses they looked amazing last week when there was some sun but now with the rain they have flumped but not to worry when they dry out they be grand that is my saying for everything when they dry out they be grand uh, geraniums they are looking little bit yellow around the tips i think on my i did actually put some feed in this soil but um two clumps of them if you remember last year these were my absolute favorites they had a pink flower and they literally flowered the whole of summer absolute fave um more grass in the pond so i think when it gets a bit drier i'll cut back this yellow growth and let the new green green growth come up most of the action is down here I'm so excited brunner is okay some bulbs have come up in the kind of woodland nature corner these little guys these poor little chaps have come up and just as they've come up 
the poor rain has flumped them down just as quick but I have a couple of them dotted around here they're only here since autumn but look at Brunnera these Brunneras are my absolute fave and if you don't have much luck growing bluebells I highly recommend the Brunneras because again these flowered from what I remember last year right the way up until the end of May and then you're left with this evergreen silvery foliage and they are my absolute fave in this little corner. You have some more little bulbs peeping up over here and also this one here I think it's a fritil fritiliata frit fritil something I don't know if you can see it there I'm trying to just zoom in so I don't stand on all this wet soil and squash something but yeah that has started to come up I think I planted a couple of them bulbs like five or six in a clump and then there's new growth on the astrantia the woodland kind of one there's new growth at the base I've still left the seed heads on them though loads of growth in the mop head hydrangeas so I think I think I'm going to take the dead heads off because there might be a risk of frost um, in the next month but the plant seems to have a fair amount of new growth on it so maybe I'll give them another week but I checked the temperature for the next week and it seems to be okay and I am so excited I came back these did start to open before I left however look at these guys these are the red perennial tulips that I planted in I think it was October November time it was quite late planting them and these are going to be a box of red tulips but <laughs> oh those sunflowers <laughs> those sunflowers they do not want to give up so here is some loads more sunflowers um, just like last year a couple of trees actually are sneaking in loads of sunflowers <laughs> dotted in between the tulips that no doubt <laughs> will give me a massive sunflower <laughs> raised bed again this year but I said it before I'm going to thin them out and pop them up and give them away I can't remember what these are they kind of look like daffodils possibly I can't remember or maybe they're alliums I'm not sure but the little um, leaves on them do look like they are daffodils and then I just have a couple more red tulips at the start here so remember the erosion I think I'm saying that right it looked like hang on that's a seed from a plant it looked like there was little buds but I think it's just yeah look there looks like there's a little flower head on it so I'm not sure when they're going to flower or open but I know that these get nice and big and bushy and the goal is for them to spill over um, the edge again when the sun comes out and these are not weighed down by loads of raindrops these will be back up stem strong and looking lovely so this is the second year for this particular tulip and it has done really well on the second year normally tulips they may not last like they're really good for one season and as like the seasons go on they tend to just not be as strong like the ones in here so these are year two and as you can see they're much smaller than last year some of them have flowered already I remember last year they were quite late flowering and some of them don't even have like many heads on them at all so I think what I'll do is when the tulips in this box finish instead of leaving them I think I'm going to take them out and maybe do a different tulip for next year so that it's stronger I might even do there is a perennial tulip like this one in a yellow color so instead of doing another box of red um, I could do like a different color tulip or I could do like a winter veg in it and then put a little poly on it like a little half poly as well so yeah just thought I'd share these ones so these although they're not as strong as last year I like the kind of it's a bit of a meadow look off them or something they're kind of whimsy whimsical growth on the apple tree I am so excited will I get an apple this year who knows but lots of buds lots of new green growth like every stem has something and there's also loads of growth down the base again oh, see these little things 
they are just self-seeding all over my garden. I think they're actually trees. Um, but yeah, there's, I don't know if that's another tree or if it's just coming up from the base. Take that little weed out, my friend. Only apples are allowed to grow in here. In the boxes then, there is some tulips. The hyacinths have just flumped over, but they smell amazing. Every time you brush past them going into the um, greenhouse. I forgot to give my mum that pot, but she was happy with her tiled tray. So I just held on to the pot that was there. <laughs> You would have seen me, I think I potted that up like two videos ago, or two guard videos ago. Some more tulips in here. Oh, sorry about the airplane going over. There is some lavender starting to grow there, but I think I need to give it just a little trim, a little haircut, um, because I didn't trim it back in autumn. I left it like over winter, so that needs a little trim. Um, I just have lots of new growth on the strawberries. So the ones that were runners, so this strawberry plant was a runner from a plant from last year. So now I have a new plant. So I have more strawberries. So I need to, I think, do something with the strawberries. I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe put on, putting them in old gutters, using old guttering to do like a little strawberry wall or something, um, because they're, they'll kind of, they'll grow. Well, they grow well for me and I give them a little bit of abuse. So maybe that's what they like. So out the front in the side border, there's a little bit of growth on the hardy perennials that I divided in autumn time. But one thing that has done really well and is about to open is, so here's my bleeding heart that I planted a couple of videos ago. And when I took it out of packet, it was looking a bit, um, I don't know if it was going to take, it was basically starting to grow out of the packet. But this has had loads of growth within two or three weeks of putting it in. So when I put it in, I think this node here was like coming out of the packet. And then this is all of the new growth here. This one here is one that I planted last year. And this one is a white bleeding heart. And as you can see, it's already got like little heads on it. So I think this one is white. And then this one has, it's the red and white, like that kind of classic one. Um, and this one is a slightly different variety, but delighted to see it has come back again for another year. I just noticed a bit of growth on, oh, what's this? It begins with an A as well, but basically it was a dividing from the another plant that I had and I divided it in August. No, sorry, that's a lie. October, you can go back to those um, previous videos where you saw I divided them to make some free plants. And as you can see, there's new growth. So it looks like it has taken. This little guy here is also a division and I think it's from my neighbor's plant and it's a GM. So I did buy one last year and then my neighbor gave me a division of his and I think I got like two or three plants. Um, so that has lots of new growth, looks like it has taken. Something I have loads of, and it's probably my own fault because I didn't take them out of the border, is these leaves fell off the tree above, but they keep wanting, they just keep seeding, um, but they are mini trees. And <laughs> These are the things. And they just, you can see, they're just self-seeding all over this border. But I don't, I don't want all of your trees, my friend. I would like to grow some hardy perennials, not trees. So I keep having to pull these out. But it's kind of, it's kind of therapeutic. It's when they lift out all in one go, it's quite relaxing just pulling them out. Also, if in doubt whether it's a weed or a plant, you can just leave it. I'm just so used to picking these out that I know what they are at this stage. So, Also, you can't tell because they are wet, but do you remember I used the algae remover on the wooden um, raised beds? So it has worked. I noticed it when these were dry the other day. If you follow me on Instagram, I can share a picture when it kind of gets dry. It actually looks like it's drying up now, actually. But the these were like full of green algae. I think up the front here was especially bad. Um, this one here, but all of the green algae has washed off. So it's been about two weeks since I put it on and it has worked on the wood. I did spray it on the sided greenhouse as well. And yes, 
that looks like. It has removed the green algae from the side. I know it's a bit like dirty and messy here, but I sprayed it just along this because I had some green algae. There's a little bit just there that I can respray. But um, yeah, it definitely worked on wood. Before I go into the greenhouse and we do seeds, I got free trees. I, it was National Tree Week like two weeks ago, the week after St. Patrick's Day, the 20 something, it was literally the day before I went away because I had it saved on my phone to go and get a free tree. So the council, um, my local council, and I think some other councils were doing stuff for tree week, were giving away free trees and it was two per household. But because I was like the only one there, he was like, do you want any more? So they're just little twigs. <laughs> But look, they already have little buds on them. So these are Irish. I don't know the exact Latin, but they're a cherry tree, but they're native ones. And before taking them, I said to him like, how big are these? And he pointed at one in the park that was 20 years old and it wasn't too big. Um, obviously don't plant them too close to your house, but I got three of them. So I got two for me and I got one for Karen. So while I was away, I just, look, you can see already new growth. There's like roots coming out. You can see green growth. Um, just put them in my wheelbarrow full of water and mulch for the couple of days while I was away. Cause I was like, oh no, I don't have time to pot them up. So these are, I think what I'm going to do is I definitely, actually I'm going to see Karen tomorrow so I can just give her hers. Um, but look, you can see there's already on this one. Hang on, let me tap the camera to zoom. You can see, can you see, please see. Um, there is already like starting to open and flower. So, oh, Mr. Blackbird, looking for a worm. So yeah, I got three trees. My plan for these is to put these in the front to create like a um, screening almost. Um, like to block the view of the house that's in front of me. And there'll be a good fair bit out onto the road. It'll be a good distance from the house. So that is what I got. They're like little twigs now, but like look at Magnolia behind me. She was a twig last year. <laughs> um, and also you can prune them and keep them small, but if you leave them grow, um, they're not good. And even love, these ones have a lovely white cherry blossom flower on them. So. Yeah, I think I might put them in really large pots for the minute until, cause it's gonna be a good while before I have the hole dug for them in the front. Um, but yeah, have lay down there. But yeah, maybe reach out to your local council if they were doing the tree giveaway. It wasn't a giveaway, they were like a competition giveaway. It was just show up, trans there was, you could plant trees um, and you could take trees as well. But um. Yeah, maybe reach out to them, see if they have any trees left. They are bare root and I think the time to plant bare root is from autumn time up until the end of April. I know that's what it is with bare root roses. I'm sure trees will be quite similar. So I'm going to get these into a pot fairly quickly um, just so they don't die on me. And then I can get them into the actual ground. I just need to help digging a hole. <laughs> anyway. Then I texted Karen and I was like, I got you a tree because the guy was like, oh, do you know anyone else who wants a tree? And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, right, let's get into the greenhouse. So, I have a milk carton that I am going to cut the top off. I just want to use the base to fill with water for the sweet peas that I want to propagate. and fill it with water. So these are my sweet peas and I'm just gonna pinch them out under here where another bit is growing. Whoa, you was a big one. Hang on, let's... I'm gonna pinch off this one. I'm just pinching underneath like a little node. Um, so 
So the guy I saw on, I think it was Instagram, he just plopped them. I'm gonna take off a leaf though. He just plopped them into water. And then like a week later, they had little roots on them. And he re, like replanted them. So let's do this little experiment as well. And see if we can get them to root What's yeah, with the ones that we pinched out. So I'm just making sure the tip of it is in water. We'll see if it roots. If it doesn't, not to worry, we still have our other plants. But could be a fun little experiment. This one's quite big, I'm gonna break it in two. Who knows what'll happen, we shall see. If it'll root, maybe not. They actually smell, they don't have their sweet pea smell yet, but they do smell nice, if that makes any sense. Okay, last one. So I'm gonna stick him in. Okay, all legs, all stems are in water. So we will see if they root. We'll give them a week. We'll see if there's any action. So I brought the sweet peas into the greenhouse because it's not too cold in here, not too warm either. So these ones are doing well. I've pinched them out. The little guys, uh, the bouquet ones, something cherub bouquet, that's the name of them. It's obviously the variety, maybe they're just smaller, but I haven't pinched them out. Um, I'll wait for them to get a little bit bigger. And then, yeah, I've popped in a stick as well to give them something as a support while they go up. I've also just brought in the Cosmos and my Teasels because they have, most of them have established and these Cosmos, because they're in my office, they're trying to creep out to get the light and they're leaning in one direction. So there's loads of room, sorry, there's loads of light in the greenhouse. So hopefully they will just lean upwards and they won't be kind of leaning towards the light because they'll just get some but oh there goes my tripod lots of growth on these guys these are about three weeks a month old so I just need to give them a little drink actually but um soon enough these will be able to pot out into the garden and um, these are not frost hardy so I just have to kind of wait for the last risk of frost to pass. But I remember last year planting some Cosmos out from plug that I got in the garden centre and they were grand and I think it was like April time. So I'll give them another few weeks and then maybe the end of April, I'll start dotting them around the border to fill in any gaps. So the last of the window sill seedlings, we have zinnias. And I think I did these over a week ago. So we just have baby leaves on top. Over here we have more zinnias. And we also have the sweet pea toilet rolls. So sweet peas in toilet rolls. And I planted these um, same time as the zinnias. So a good bit after the first batch. So again, that's something I find with the good old windowsill ceilings is they just wanna shoot up that direction, hang on, to go towards the sunlight. So I think I might, I'm gonna keep the zinnias in here and on the windowsill where I can keep an eye on them until they get a bit bigger. And then I think I'll pop them into the greenhouse like the Cosmos. Something that's really cute is I obviously spilled some seeds. <laughs> and there's some soil at the bottom and a random screw. But literally these seedlings are so <laughs> robust, they will grow anywhere. So there is a bit of soil. So I'll wait until they get a bit bigger and I'll just prick them out and I'll stick them into um, a little pot. But yeah, so this is windowsill zinnias. Um, zinnias are such a nice cut flower. And last year I did some, but I was raging I didn't do more. So hopefully they have self-seeded a little bit over there. But if not, here I have two trays of zinnias. It looks like another rain shower is coming. 
So there is definitely no grass cutting gonna happen this week itching to do it. I also need to go and get some grass seed. April is a great month for patching up any areas in your garden where over winter, I know I walk through the garden. I think crows are having a fight. Um, yeah, so I need to do the patches where some grass has just kind of gotten worn over the winter and pop down some grass seed. So I know it's been quite wet, but once the temperature is a little bit warm, like mid end April, great month for patching up the grass and sowing some grass seed. So I need to go and buy some. I'm also itching just to tidy up this little corner here, the seating area. It's still a bit kind of chilly. Oh, it wasn't a crow, it was a starling. There's a starling walking around the garden like a boss. <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. How is everybody? Has the snow melted? Have you been able to plant stuff? Some of you guys are also coming into autumn. Some of our Australian, New Zealand viewers have been saying that their gardens are having their final flush as you guys are coming into autumn. Um, so yeah, let me know what, whatever corner of the globe you're in, how's your garden, how are you getting on? And I'll chat to you in the comments section and I'll see you in the next video.